Well, we're back and there has been plenty of good news. There's been some big steps taken on the plastic bag front, some smaller ones on the food waste front, and there is some hope on coffee cups. But before we get into that, I want to look at another big waste problem that hopefully we can do something about together. Every year, Australians use 17 billion bottles and cans. But less than half of these are recycled. Fifteen thousand bottles and cans are thrown away every single minute. That means in just one day, we waste enough bottles and cans to stretch over four thousand kilometres. That's the whole way across Australia. But there is a way to improve this. For years, South Australia has led the way with recycling because of its container deposit scheme. People pay an extra 10 cents for every bottle, can or carton, which they get back if they return them. Northern Territory introduced a similar system a few years ago, and New South Wales have just brought one in, with other states planning to follow soon. But the states that are holding out are Tasmania and Victoria. The Victorian government says it doesn't need a container deposit scheme. It claims to have the lowest litter rate in the country based on one study. But Clean Up Australia last year said Victoria was the dirtiest state. So this morning, I'm here at the Yarra to see for myself. There are so many plastic bottles here. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. In this little bit. There are tons in the reeds and are easy to collect. God, look at this. What's dangerous about all this is how easily this plastic could make its way along the river and into the ocean at Port Phillip Bay. Look at that. 15, 20 metres in about 10 minutes and we've filled a bag. Every single one of these would be 10 cents under a container deposit scheme. I'll tell you what, if Victoria ever does bring in a container deposit scheme, kids, you might want to come down here. Whatever Victoria is doing with recycling, it doesn't look like it's working. I'm going to send a message to the Premier to let him know. I'm going to deliver what I've collected from the Yarra directly to the electoral office of the Victorian Premier, Daniel Andrews. Maybe that'll make it harder for him to ignore the problem. Delivery for Daniel Andrews' electorate office? Yep, that's here. So, one, excellent. No worries. Thanks, Thanks mate. Cheers. There you are. A little costume change means I might get away with another delivery. Or two. Let's hope they don't recognise me. Delivery to Daniel Andrews, electorate office. Sure is. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Oh. Oh. This is a heavy one. Delivery for a uh, Daniel Andrews. You know Daniel? He passed this on to him. He needs to see. Is this getting, they're getting bigger and bigger, are they? I, I think this might be the biggest. We're running out of big ones. I'm actually doing Victoria a huge favour. It takes around 400 years for plastic to break down in water. But even then, it ends up as tiny pieces, which cause even more harm to marine life. Delivery for Daniel Andrews. 
thanks. We're good, thanks. You don't want this one? No. Why not? I'll just leave it here. I think they might be onto me. Make sure these get to Daniel. Tell him the system may not be working, OK? All right, cool. Good on you. Thanks, Do you want me, you don't want more? I can get more. Like, it takes 10 minutes to get that many. If a container deposit scheme is brought in, I want the 10 cents back of each of these, OK? All right, thank you. Thank you. Well, hopefully the Premier gets the message in those bottles. Perhaps if there was a container deposit scheme in Victoria, less of those would have ended up in the Yarra. I'll see if I can get a response from the Premier later. 40 years ago, South Australia launched the nation's first container deposit scheme. Supported by some classic 70s campaigns, the scheme has been a game changer. Drop something, sport. South Australia, too lovely to litter. The idea is that the polluter pays, where every container costs an extra 10 cents, but you get 10 cents back if you return it to the right place. And this system works. Got to see I'm not the only one sorting through bins. South Australia has the highest recycling rate of any state, with an impressive return rate of almost 80%. But what do the locals think? How are you? You got two seconds? Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to work, so... You're just going to work, so yeah. you, can, you can spend hours. <laughs> you yeah, don't need to rush. Yeah. What about the container deposit legislation? Do you kind of... As a kid, did you take your cans and your... Yeah, we still do. Yeah. You still do it? Yeah, because we used to... Because I've got two sisters, so we used to do, like, a rotation, um, and so we'd have a bit of a competition, like, see who could get the most. We had um, Keep South Australia Beautiful campaign years ago, probably when I was a child, mm. and it's just ingrained in us now. Well, we use it. My son is nine years old, so... Try and collect the bottles and cans, and yeah. every now and then cash them in, and he gets to keep the money, so he's pretty happy That's with that. That's good. Do you collect your cans and return them? Of course, of course. I've grown up doing it, so we've done that our whole life. And, yeah. You know, we'll put it towards something. You know. Container deposit uh, legislation here. Do you, you guys collect your cans and your bottles and yes, return them? Yes, we do. Yeah. Uh, my family and I collect bottles every now and then and take them down to the local depot. All containers can be returned to a collection centre like this called a mini depot. Good to see you, Craig. Craig. How are you, John? How are you? Yeah, good. good to meet you. Look, uh, this is great to see. This is South Australia. What, what is this? This is just a depot, isn't this it? This is a, a local recycling depot. There's about 130 of these around South Australia, and they receive uh, all sorts of recyclables, container deposit stuff, but also scrap steel, car batteries, plastics, cardboard, yeah. uh, and they are processed, and then the next one will drive through. We have 95% of South Australians um, work with the system. It's embedded in their lifestyles. Are you surprised that after 40 years that more states around Australia haven't done it? Well, we've been asking them to and uh, demonstrating that uh, with our high return rate, um, which is well over 80%, mm. but we're talking millions and millions and millions of containers, uh, it just makes so much sense. Uh, ten cents, as a matter of fact. <laughs> ten cents, yeah. But, um, so we're glad to see that New South Wales and Queensland and other states yeah. are coming on board. In the past year, nearly 587 million containers were recovered by collection depots for recycling in South Australia. This means that over $58 million was refunded to the community. Do you like having a container deposit scheme? Oh, yeah, fabulous. You go into state and you look at the rubbish everywhere, it's shocking. Don't lose these, it's part of the money. <laughs> <laughs> Easy money. I think it's brilliant. Yeah. I'm from Britain, so you don't get money for waste. No. Britain, you... Well, the rest of Australia, yeah. you don't get it. Yeah. It ends up in the rivers. It ends yeah. up in the sea. It ends up in the highways. Well, hopefully the rest of Australia will probably at some point. Everybody could do it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Good night, mate. Hey, Thanks very much. This hands-on separation process also creates a cleaner recycling stream. So both plastic and glass are more valued by recyclers and manufacturers around the country. Because not only are they separated, they're not contaminated with organics and other household rubbish. 
a lot of the glass from our curbside recycling from other states is heavily contaminated. This can lead to the stockpiling we saw on an ABC investigation by Four Corners. So can we fix the problem with glass recycling? I'm visiting the largest glass recycler and manufacturer in Australia to find out. So every day we get about 15 of these trucks come in um, from material recovery facilities. Yeah. And so we get about 300 tonnes of this material per day. The glass that arrives here in Brisbane has already been through a local council-run recycling facility. So it's 70% glass and 30% glass. It doesn't look glass. like glass, though, does it? I mean, it's got no, the glass is very heavy, so it's hard to identify the glass, but there's a lot of it is glass. Yeah. We also have here a lot of the metals that are either attached to the glass and weren't able to be removed. We have a lot of organics and, and, and wood waste and garden waste and other things that, that weren't, weren't meant to be recycled. So all the, you've still got the plastic container tops. An eraser. This whole plant is dedicated to removing contaminants that can't melt in the glass furnace. Do you think it'll pull out this eraser? It should pull out the eraser. It should pull out the eraser? Yeah. That's good. I'll leave it in there then. Now the plastic, paper and other contaminants that weren't removed the first time are taken out. Then the recycled glass is taken to a furnace facility where it's mixed with virgin material, sand, soda ash and limestone. So you need to look at it through the filtered lens, but you should be able to see the virgin materials and the, and the recycled glass sitting on top. Producing bottles from recycled glass rather than virgin materials uses 75% less energy. There seem to be some people who are doubting whether or not the stuff gets recycled. Uh, you know, if you're saying to somebody, is it worth putting in my curbside, is it uh, worth doing? It's absolutely worth doing. I mean, I've got four, four kids at home and I'm teaching them about recycling and I'm advocating the absolute need to put glass in the recycling bins and trying to teach them what happens to that. It comes back, it gets made into new bottles, and it's really, really important for, you know, for sustainability and reasons to be able to do that successfully. You know, these bottles here today may have origins that go back 100 years in this country because glass is infinitely recyclable. And this glass that we're recycling today can be back in the system again for another 1,000 years. We saw those uh, pictures of all the kind of the glass that, uh, in the warehouse that was just being you know, stockpiled there. What's going to happen to that stuff? That glass is uh, earmarked to be recycled back into new bottles in the Melbourne facility that we have. So in your facility that's getting re re recycled? Yeah, correct. So why was it sitting there? Is the economy wrong? No, at the time there was just, um, uh, there's, there's a lapse between the, the facility for that particular party being built um, and the need to just stockpile material ready for the facility to be operational. Uh, that's been running out for more than 12 months. This facility here processes 100,000 tonnes a year. Um, we can increase that, and we would like to increase it. So it's interesting having heard these kind of stories of, oh, you know, we've got the stockpiles of glass and there's no, you know, <laughs> we're not recycling it. You're actually saying you want more glass. We want more glass. We already recycle 1.1 billion bottles per year back into new containers, um, and we can move that, you know, approaching up to 1.5, 1.6 billion. Wow. All right, well, I'll put up my bin for you then. <laughs> <laughs> Of all the glass we use in Australia, we're only recycling around 56%. To do better, we need a cleaner waste stream and a container deposit scheme delivers this. So we need to keep recycling our glass and demand a container deposit scheme in those states that are holding out, Tasmania and Victoria. Well, I did follow up with the Premier and got a letter back from the Minister for the Environment who says, we're watching with interest the container deposit schemes being used by other states. But while we're ever conscious of protecting the environment, we don't want to heap unnecessary costs on Victorians. Which is strange, because really under a container deposit scheme, the only people that pay are the ones that buy stuff and just chuck it out. So I don't think it's a big cost. And look, it's up to you, Victorians. You're the ones that can put the pressure on your government. Now to food waste. There's still plenty of room for improvement here. The latest National Waste Report confirms of all the food waste we generate in Australia, more than half is produced in the home. We waste one out of every five grocery bags that we buy. No, it's not going to end up in the bin. <laughs> Into the bin! No, I'm not put them in the bin! <laughs> I swear there's going to no, be No, not the blue bar! <laughs> A few months ago, I saw the shocking amount of food waste on banana farms in far north Queensland. Oh my gosh. Just 
standing on a mound of food. Banana waste, yep. yeah. Do you think we can change this? Yeah, I think we've got a bit of a battle on the hands, but we can only try and change things. Eat a big banana, eat. people. Eat a big banana. This was not only on the farms growing large Cavendish bananas. Many of the smaller ladyfinger bananas were also going to waste. Some places have something like a wonky fruit type thing. You couldn't sell that there? Well, not at this stage. We haven't, done, haven't found anything like that. Today, I'm heading back to far north Queensland to see if anything's changed. I know that a lot of you put pressure on the supermarkets to make a change, but did that flow through to the farms? Hey, Mick. Hey, see you again. Yeah, you too. You too. See you. How's yeah. it going? Still the Not same production bad. line here. Yeah, same thing's happened. Nothing much changes there. Yeah. So, has anything changed? What's well, happened since we spoke to you? We've gone in with Harris Farms with the misshapen bananas. Yeah. Um, up to a pallet a week. So, how many in a pallet? Uh, up, to, up to 64 cartons. Just more cartons. What, is it about 80 in a carton? Oh, uh, thereabouts, there. So you're talking about, what, about 6,000 bananas a week? Yeah. That's quite a lot. It was a pallet a week we're not throwing out. Yeah. And um, I sent them down a trial, and they said, we can take two pallets of those a week, you've got a mick. And, yeah, I said, are you serious? And they said, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I said, all right, we'll start sending. So, really? Yeah. Can you Can you send down two pa pallets a week? Uh, we haven't done that many as yet, but I think we'll get there in due time. Yeah. That's one of the things I've always wondered about, though, with the kind of, oh, the seconds fruit thing. Does it compromise your main line? Like, it hasn't meant you're selling less of the proper, you know, the A-grade stuff, has it? No, no, not at all. Not at all. Yeah, these other lines, they're the same. But, yeah, we're just getting these out the door instead of out the... Out, out, the, out, paddock. out the paddock. Out oh, the paddock, that's it, yeah. That's so. good. Now, I guess the thing is, I mean, that's great. You've been able to reduce your waste a fair bit. Could all farms do this? Maybe not so much with Cavendish. Ladyfingers is only 5% of the Australian banana market, full yeah. stop. So, so when there's a glut of Cavendish, they can't cut all their, or harvest all their fruit anyway because the market can't take it because yeah. there's just too many. There's horses for courses with the two different lines. Yeah. So it's worked for you, but it doesn't mean that every farm can actually... I don't think so, no. I don't think everybody can do it, yeah. Remember that I get paid every time I work on this production line, don't you? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, so th th it's not a flash pack or anything. They're just, they're just put placed in there. Do you sell these for us? Like half the price or what? Yeah, less than half the price. Less than half the price. Yeah. Yeah. Because I remember last time you had that old truck that was filling up about once a day. Yeah, that's right. You're doing that less now? Yeah, we're probably doing it less, yeah. We're not even going to get a half truck today. That's way less. So there's the stalk, eh? Hey? Part of the stalk, yeah. And that's mainly stalk in there. Yeah, it's a lot less, yeah, isn't there? a lot less, yep. And I can see you've um, you spent all the extra money you got on this nice new wheels for the that's truck. That's it, that's it, yeah. It's looking good, mate. Yes, yeah, that's, that's it. Really... <laughs> Keeping up with it. It's a great result for Mick and an example of how change is possible in the war on waste. But the good news doesn't end there. The seconds bananas that are not sold to Harris Farm, Mick sends to his neighbour, banana grower turned flower producer, Rob Watkins. He's invented a way to turn banana waste into a world first, a baking flour that can be used for gluten-free recipes. The idea is to then create another marketplace yeah. for fruit. Which is great, because otherwise... After two cyclones destroyed his banana crops, Rob realised he needed a backup plan. I used to just sit there as a banana grower and see all this waste in the bananas. So I thought, let's have a look at what we can do with this waste. And I started watching all the wallabies and the wild pigs at the waste heaps wanting to eat the green ladyfingers, not the ripe ones at the waste heap. Oh, really? And they're in the peak of health and condition. And I was sort of sat back and said, there, what are these guys telling us? Rob decided there must be a better way. So he built a factory to turn his banana waste and mix seconds into an edible product. So these are the bananas from Mix Farm? Yeah. Even though they're uh, discarded as a reject or unsaleable fruit, there's nothing wrong with them. What we're after is what's in there. Beautiful, fresh ladyfinger pulp. This is hugely beneficial for the human diet in its green form. Beautiful fruit. Let's see what this 40 ton can turn into, hey? Let's yeah, see this definitely. Stuff. Then, the seconds bananas are milled and turned into flour that's high in prebiotic fibre. So this is where the magic happens. Within 20 minutes, we've got powder coming straight out here, fresh. 20 minutes to do this? Yep. Nice and fresh. Look at that. Amazing. And that's it. Natural, beautiful. Turn waste into something. That's it. That's beautiful. all we need to do. 
This small-scale operation is proof of what can be done through innovation. But we need to do more to help solve the waste problems, because Aussie farmers and growers are still at the mercy of a system dominated by the two major supermarkets. Today, I want to find out if Coles are willing to budge on the crazy cosmetic fruit and veg standards we highlighted earlier this year. Now, with bananas and fruit and veg, we're standing in this section. Has there been any change to the kind of cosmetic standards since we last spoke? There's been no specific change in bananas, for example, but we vary our specifications, you know, on a daily, weekly basis, mm. based on, you know, conversations with our growers and the quality and the volume of product they've got available. Yeah, because I think last time you spoke about you're going to do more with your suppliers to try and make sure as, as much of a, the kind of the crop is used. Have you made any changes on that front, any new changes to try and use more of the crop? So there's been some interesting new products, things like cauliflower rice, and pumpkin noodles, and actually they're using products which, you know, crops which might not always meet some yeah. of the standards. And those cosmetic standards that are still there, I mean, I mean, I know that, you know, supermarkets such as yourself claim that that's reflecting the consumers. Like, are you willing to do that experiment where we kind of track the people taking bananas and that and see what they're actually taking? We've been tracking what customers buy in yeah. terms of bananas for years. Yeah. We know if the bananas get left over, there's the, the singles, um, people will, pull that banana off the hand of bananas, put it to one side. Um, so yeah, over time, we've arrived at um, a, st a standard with, a, with our growers and with what customers are picking off the shelves. It doesn't look like Coles are gonna change their cosmetic standards anytime soon. They say they listen to their customers, so keep talking to them on social media and tell them loud and clear, size doesn't matter. Big, long, tall, small, you like them all. Sometimes I just want a small one. Does it taste the same when you put it in your mouth? That's all that matters. It worked for Australia's Ban the Bag campaign. The major supermarkets did listen to you and pledged to phase out single-use plastic bags by mid-next year. And since then, the state governments of Western Australia and Victoria have promised to do the same. However, as I saw in Tasmania earlier this year, a state ban is only a small step forward because it still has loopholes that allow retailers to give out free plastic bags. So as long as it's thicker, you can give them out. What we really need is national leadership, a levy on all plastic bags across Australia. Today, I'm heading to Canberra with my giant plastic ball to see if the Minister for Environment, Josh Frydenberg, can give me some answers. Well, we're in Canberra and we haven't been able to find the Environment Minister yet, but we literally just pulled into a car park and illegally parked in the car space of the Department of Environment and Energy Deputy Secretary. So I think we might go and see, they must be around here somewhere. Department of Environment, here we come. Look, this plastic bag thing is frustrating for all of us. Can you imagine how frustrating it is for the people from the Department of the Environment? They've been writing reports about phasing out plastic bags for nearly 20 years. Hey, mate. So I want to ask why nothing has been done. Hello. <laughs> how are you going on batting these? <laughs> Here in Canberra, we actually don't... I know they haven't. But I was just wondering, the federal government, when's the, when's the national ban coming in? When's the national ban coming in? We might have to talk to our secretary. Yeah? Is he right, right at all? I'll see if I can find him. See if you can find him. Wait there, I'll be back. Are you the secretary? Definitely not. You're not the secretary? Oh, no. No. You look a bit like him. How are you going? Not too bad. What can we do for you? Well, I was just hoping to speak to the secretary. We just wanted to see how the uh, plastic bag ban's going. I know you guys have been pushing for it for about, I don't know, 20 years. Mm. Just seeing how it's going. Well, um, yeah, um, I'll see what we can do. Just, just hold on. We'll see, see if he comes down. He's, somebody's going to grab him, so I'm sure he'll be coming down. All right. It's not like he'd be trying to avoid us. Oh, 
there's a posse of Department of Environment people here. Surely one of you has the inside word on what's happening with plastic bags. Yeah. You see, large amounts of people standing around and doing nothing is exactly what's been happening with the plastic bag issue at the federal level for many years. <laughs> Are you Department of Environment? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Oh. <clears throat> Do you want to go get the secretary for me? <laughs> yeah, sure, I've got him on speed dial. It's good to have security on side for once. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky plastic bags don't biodegrade. We've been here so long they would have disappeared. Great. Hello? Oh, you've come to talk to me. Sorry, it took a while. It took a while. What, you had to find out what had happened. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get out of a meeting. How can I help? So I'm just interested. Is there anything going to happen federally about plastic bags? So yeah. recently, the minister chaired a meeting of his yeah. state and territory counterparts. Plastic bags were on the agenda of that meeting. I I've, saw that. I brought for you. Yeah, a I've, 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 I've got the, got the I, I know, I've read statement. this. Let's see. To address this, state and territory ministers agreed to work with retailers to explore options to reduce thicker plastic shopping bags. This is classic bureaucraties for we're not doing anything new. So, again, I, I guess all I can say is things are happening. Yeah. Um, in terms of do we need to do something new, well, we're certainly moving towards it. And now, is there any chance, because the, the countries that have actually been most successful dealing with plastic bags, the ones that bought in a kind of national levy, you know, charged you know, 10 cents, 20 cents per bag across the board. Is there any chance of that happening in Australia? Just blink once for yes and twice for no. Again, I'm going to go back to the fact that we're making progress. Already. Making progress. Um, so I, I missed how many times you blinked. I don't know the answer. I don't we're going to have to look back at the tape. You didn't blink at all. I don't think so. <laughs> um, States are moving towards um, a phase out of plastic bags. Yeah. That's the, the mechanism that Australia's adopted. As I said, the minister is bringing those states together to ensure we're doing that in a nationally consistent way. OK. All right, well, I think that means apparently we're moving forward. Thanks for coming on, Dan. Thanks for talking to me. No worries, Craig. Thank you. See you, guys. Thanks. I'm not sure that was worth it. Hanging around to be handed a piece of paper that actually said nothing. No sign of Minister Frydenberg, my ball and I are heading to Parliament House. I should be able to sneak right through the front doors. I'm sure no one will notice me. As long as these school kids don't give me away. Too bad, the bad guys. Hey, guys. Good, how are you? Good. Just wanted to take the plastic bag ball inside. Not gonna happen, not gonna happen. Why not? There's no rules against plastic bags that's ever come out of here. Whatever you do, don't shoot my ball, OK? Yes. <laughs> Funny wind. Whoa! This is the plastic bag ball. Yeah, nice. No plastic bags aren't allowed in the ACT? Well, I know there's a plastic bag ban in the ACT, although the Federal Parliament hasn't brought one in, so... Yeah. Thanks, guys. Well, I'm glad to see the Federal Parliament's banned something, at least. <laughs> there you go. While the Federal Police might have banned my giant plastic ball from Parliament House, I'm not going to give up. I'll be back here when the House finishes sitting tonight. We're here at Parliament House in Canberra. We're here to try and find out from the politicians which party they think's been the best at not keeping their promises about getting rid of plastic bags and see if they're going to change that in the future. Is this... Yeah. Hey, Bill, how are you? Nice to see you, mate. Good. Are you going to make a promise to get rid of plastic bags like Kevin Rudd did and then, you know, scrib on it in the first few months? I think I made a um, statement against plastic bags on the project. I know, no, that's about it. Everyone makes a pro yeah, statement against it, just no one actually does anything. Well, I've got to get elected first. Okay, okay. okay. Sure. okay. And then you'll do it, okay. It's the only way you can. That's what they said last time. <laughs> oh. 
cynical. He said cynical. What do you mean, Garrett? Right? They promised to do it. Fish didn't work, so I, I trust you. Thank you. I trust you. You're going to do it. <laughs> Save it. Well, he'll either do it or become, you know, the 50th politician in a row to not do it after saying they will. Or he'll never be elected. <laughs> hey, good, good. How are you? Just been asking an important question, right? Who do you reckon's been better, Labor or Coalition, when it comes to scooping their promises on getting rid of plastic bags? I think the Coalition's much better at delivering on what they say they're going to do. Really? So, for instance, when that, that guy, what was his name? Malcolm Turnbull was the environment minister and he said that he was going to get rid of plastic bags by 2008. He delivered, right? Well, there's been a delay in that. There's been a delay? Yeah. There's been a delay. What's the date again? <laughs> 2017? She said, has been a delay. <laughs> sometimes there's a lag. And sometimes a lag, yeah. 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 All right. See ya. Cheers. We celebrate the 10 year anniversary soon of that promise. Mate, we should clean up plastic bags. We should. Yeah. So, how do we get it done? What do you suggest? How do we do well, it? Well, you put a levy in yeah. across the nation. Because they charge us 15 cents now. At, at big workers. supermarkets, they yeah. do. Yeah, 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 exactly. And if you do that across the na nation, you, you probably lead to about 89% drop in plastic bags. Yeah. Well, I'm happy enough with that idea. Yeah? yeah. Bring a solution. Yeah, well, I you am know. the chair of the Environment Committee, so, yeah, I probably should. Well, you've got the power to do it. I have. Don't come to me. No, you're creating the conversation. <laughs> See, you create the conversation okay. with the community and so Yeah, but you've got to do the work. I love the fact that part way in the conversation that you remembered is the chair of the Environmental Committee. You think that would have come up earlier? Sadly, there was no sign of the Environment Minister, Josh Frydenberg, but I was still hoping to track him down later. A few months ago, I used GPS tracking devices to follow the journeys of plastic bags that are supposed to be recycled by the two major supermarkets. The ones I dropped in Woolies delivered two very different results. The first one ended up in landfill, and the second in China, at a British Chinese logistics company. But I've reached a dead end, and I can't confirm whether the plastic bags and my GPS were being recycled or not. I also dropped a tracker in a coals bin run by Redcycle, which made it as far as this depot in Brisbane. Bingo. This morning, I'm meeting Liz Cassell, the founder of Redcycle. And the bin. Yes. The company responsible for setting up many soft plastic recycling bins. So, Liz, I know I was kind of sneaking around in Brisbane trying to find the place. Is that, that's where the kind of stuff from Brisbane is? Yeah, so that's found. our depot, yeah. That's your depot, yeah. Yeah, so we just wait until we have a full truckload and then it to comes down it to down. Victoria, yeah. Yeah, can I get my uh, GPS back, please? <laughs> it's probably <laughs> been ground up it's by now. It's probably been ground up. <laughs> it's probably in one of these seats. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> And look, I think lots of us have been shocked when we've actually separated our bins, just how much of the bin is those soft plastics. Like, you know, you can halve your bin almost by taking those out. That's absolutely true. You really can. And we get so many emails from Australians just saying, my waste bin is down to nothing now. So with Coles and Woolies uh, having a plastic bag ban and other states bringing in bans, do you think that you're going to not have enough soft plastics to deal with? We are not worried at all. <laughs> And just to give you an example, we've been operating in Adelaide Coles for over five years where there was a plastic bag ban in place. And Adelaide recovers more volume per store than any other state. Wow. And 72% of what we recover is unavoidable grocery packaging. So, so yeah. And when I say unavoidable, I mean like a frozen peas bag or yeah. something like that, that we're never going to be able to say no to that. Uh, um, I can carry my frozen peas for <laughs> Alone. In your pocket. Yes, yeah, just put it in my exactly. pocket. Exactly. So how many red cycle bins are there now? There are 824 around Australia. 824, yes, okay. Yes, yes. And are they predominantly in which shops? We've got 724 in Coles supermarkets and 100 in Woolworths supermarkets. In six years, Red Cycle has saved 325 million pieces of plastic from landfill. That's great, but it's just a fraction of the soft plastic we use. Redcycle relies on Coles and a few Woolworths stores to host collection bins and then to purchase the end products made in Victoria by Australian company Replas. While Coles have more than 700 Redcycle bins, Woolworths only have 100. 
So today, I'm asking Woolworth CEO Brad Banducci why. Brad, great to see you. To see you. First of all, congratulations on leading the way on the plastic bag ban. It surprised me that you, I guess, beat the governments to it. Well, we felt we might be waiting a long time, so we <laughs> decided we better get out there. And actually, yeah. we, we're trying to be really focused on what our customers want and the show and our research show that our customers expect us to take leadership. I feel like on the soft plastics recycling, you yep. guys are kind of falling behind a bit. I mean, I know that, 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 that Coles has got like over 700 stores yeah. now do the red cycle recycling. You've still got only about 100. What's happening on that soft plastics recycling? Oh, look, um, by 30 June, we will have, every store will have uh, red cycle in it. So that will, that, that's with red cycle though? Absolutely. It's not, because I know last yep. time we put some, you know, GPSs in your Queensland yeah. stores and one lot ended up in, in landfill, yep. one ended up in China. And, you know, when we, when we found it ended up in China, you know, Vizzy wouldn't even tell us where it was going or what happened. So you, you, you kind of, as long as I guess you can tell the customer this is being recycled yep. in this place. Well, it's created the right dialogue. Uh, and so I think we've, uh, we've workshopped that with our partners and, yeah. and we're working very hard on it. I don't think it'll work perfectly every time. I think no. it is going to be about education about us having the soft plastic options in the store and then working with our partners to make sure that uh, there's integrity through yeah. the supply chain. And what about, so, so you know, post July 1, if I yeah. put some more tracking devices into the uh, plastic bag recycling... Please let it work. <laughs> Please let it work? OK, yeah, I'm just going to warn you on that one. <laughs> this is great news. Very soon, all the thousand woolly stores will have a soft plastic recycling bin that we turn into products here in Australia. If you don't have one in your local Woolworths by next June, make sure you get on social media and let them know. While this is a step in the right direction for soft plastics, I'm hoping there have been some changes for the farmers as well. We have adjusted slightly the specification of bananas we'll accept in the store. So okay. we'll accept a little bit more uh, sagging at the top of the banana and a slightly more dappled... No one's still proved to me that customers won't buy the bigger ones or the smaller ones, but I know that this is the kind of the assertion for everyone. I know, it's such an important item, so we are cautiously adjusting as yeah. we go. So that's one initiative. The second one we've done is work on the small banana. And in, in plastic, though. You know. <laughs> plastic that can now be recycled. You can now recycle it, recycle. OK. What about other fruit and veg? Have you been able to change the specifications on other ones? That's where the odd bunch really comes into play yeah, for okay. us. Are more people buying the odd bunch? Yeah, look, it's grown at over 10% since your show, but there's enormous upside still left for it. And again, yeah. I'm excited because it's a win for everyone. It solves the farmer's solution, provides great value for our customers. So. I, got, I got a lot of people feedback after the show because they were like, look, I want to buy Odd Bunch, but it's in plastic. So, I mean, it's funny because it's, it, it's a difficult thing. <laughs> I know, I know. So we're still working on back on the recyclable plastic solution yeah. to that yeah. and other recyclable material to it. But okay. it's uh, well, still working for yeah, That's good. In a few short months, Woolworths have made some definite progress on plastic bags, but they still have a lot of work to do on cosmetic standards. Coffee cup number one, leaving now. How long my tram? Early this year, I filled a Melbourne tram with 50,000 coffee cups to show just how many are thrown away every 30 minutes. Hey, Melbourne, remember to bring your own coffee cup. These all end up in landfill. Once Australians heard about the coffee cup problem, many were keen to jump on board my campaign to bring your own coffee cup. As a result, reusable cup sales went through the roof. And more than 3,000 coffee shops have joined the Responsible Cafes movement to give discounts if you bring your own cup. We were the first cafe just to stand alone and go, hey, here we are. You really don't need um, to have paper cups. It also sparked a national conversation about whether coffee cups are being recycled in the current paper waste stream. The problem is separating the plastic lining from the paper cup. However, I found an inventor and paper recycler in Ballarat who said he's found a simple solution to this problem. Show us the possible solution to coffee cups. <laughs> well, I've got it. Yeah. You got it, you're fine. Yeah. Well, if somebody yeah. can get it. It's just a workshop. So like coffee cups and everything, yeah. OK. So this is what you take out. This is the yes. plastic from inside from there. From inside there. OK, in wow. One piece. And it comes out in one piece. It doesn't one break? Piece. No. Yeah, wow. No. And then, and then this is... This, this is the paper. This is the paper, and OK. And it's long fibre paper, and the recyclers really want this 
paper yep. to go back in their system. And can you recycle this? Yes, you can. What do you turn this back into? You turn that back into, like, uh, replastic and use it um, to make bollards. So it's like a yeah. soft plastic? A soft plastic. Yeah, yeah OK. Like, yeah. Do you need your coffee cups to be in a kind of separate stream to be able to do this, or can it just be going through the normal? Yeah. That's one of the biggest problems is we can recycle every coffee cup. Yeah. But we've got to get the coffee cups. Yeah. So how do we do it? Come, show me how we do this. You grab some cups. Yeah, and let's uh, grab some cups. We'll put them through for Take you. Take a bit of a mix. For the first part, the crew has to leave the room. We'll kick everybody else out and... Oh, this uh, is the secret bit. The secret bit. you got to get out. All right. John, out you get. Until Dennis has a patent for his secret technique, we can't show you this part. But I was allowed to stay and witnessed how a chemical reactor starts separating the plastic lining from the paper cup. After a few minutes, we invited the crew back in to see the second part of the separation process. Right, so we've done the first part that you guys couldn't see, and now it's the second part, which seems to involve some green cordial. Yeah. It's supposed it to be like lime, like, yeah. No, a bit lime. Okay. All right? Yep. This genuinely smells like green cordial. Does it? <laughs> it does. I don't know. <laughs> so now we just stir it around and break the cups up. You'll see them breaking up. This will be done by mechanical means. So the long-term plan is not you with a stick. You no. do this through a whole machine. Yes, through a machine. But this is oh. just a show. These fumes aren't bad for you, are they? Yeah, they are. They are great. Probably, it's good news. You know, you might be around next week, but yeah. don't worry about it. Oh, it's good to see. <laughs> At least I've discovered something. I'm still alive, so... You're, you're, you're still here. Work. So there you go. This is one of the bits of plastic. Yeah. Here's a look. Oh, wow. Huh. It's, uh, it's quite hot. Yes. It's hot and it's also... Is it safe to, safe to touch? Safe to touch. Safe to touch. Safe safe to good, touch. good to know that now. Yeah. Well, there you go. And it doesn't break apart the plastic. That's kind of the whole part come out. Mm. Yeah, wow. Look at that. And your paper's left in there. Paper's left in there, separated. The good news is the separated paper from these cups can now be easily recycled. That's quite a lot of paper for four or five cups. Yeah. yeah. I mean, from a billion, you could get a real. <laughs> well, real you forest. realise you realise that a hundred thousand cups gives you ten ton of paper. Hundred thousand cups, ten ton of paper. Ten ton of paper. Wow, there you go. So, well, if we can actually get that separated, then that can be used again. That can be. Right. I love the fact that Dennis, messing around with some chemicals and a stick, has found a way to separate the plastic from the paper in a coffee cup, and that has always been the big problem when it came to recycling them. And hopefully, this can happen on a much bigger scale so that you can get that paper and properly recycle it, and there'll be a market for that. Obviously, one of the problems is that you do need to get the coffee cup separate from other parts of the paper stream, and that does make it more difficult, and that's obviously one of the things that needs to be solved. And until that's solved, I guess, bringing your own cup is still the solution, but at least we're moving a bit closer to a bigger one. During my brief time as a garbo in Melbourne, I was stunned to see how many coffee cups were being thrown into general waste bins. It's filled with coffee cups. If you're going to encourage people to use reusable cups and give a discount, it becomes hard when it's a dollar for a cup of coffee. Coffee cups, they're a nightmare. A huge amount of the coffee cups I found were the one dollar variety you buy from 7-Eleven stores. 7-Eleven have recognised this is a big problem and have been trying to find a solution. So Angus, when I went through the bins in Melbourne, Melbourne City, I found an enormous amount, actually most of the coffee cups, I know Melbourne think they have coffee stores, but of all the 7-Eleven coffee. coffees, the 7-Eleven coffees, you know. And uh, how many of these do you make here? How many do you sell? Yeah, so between coffee and soapy, so the similar type of cup, it's about 70 million a year. So 70 million. And that's just that's just 7-Eleven, eh? That's just 7-Eleven myself. Are you, one of the, are you one of the biggest coffee providers in Australia? We're probably the second largest in the country. Second largest. Is the biggest McDonald's? Yeah. With selling 70 million of these cups, did you kind of talk to any existing recycling companies? Like, would they take the cups as they were now? No, no, they, they wouldn't. So we, we tried looking at all those angles and came to the conclusion we actually had to adopt a different strategy, which would yeah. provide the vehicle by which they could be separated. Yeah. Most consumers just have always thought that a coffee cup can be recycled, mm. and, and that's just not the case. Yeah. So what we've now started to work with is we've closed loop in their Simply Cup brand to find a way now to 
I suppose, pine is separating coffee and sloppy cups from that general waste yeah. stream. Uh, and, you know, what we want to do is, I suppose, is to get in there and actually start a revolution around people doing it, you know, having the opportunity to actually put their coffee cups in a place where it can now be purely so recycled. So, so what's going to happen, if I buy this coffee cup here, I'm probably going to go back to my office or somewhere else yep. and yeah. take it away. Yeah. You don't certainly drink it in that store. No, 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 no. it's not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, seats here. So what is it that people are going to be able to do? Where will that people actually return the coffee cup to? We're going to have 200 locations within our network for them to bring it back. Yeah. So that might be just the, the tradesman who leaves the cup in his car or her car, and then when they come back and buy the next cup the next morning, they can actually just drop it in the recycling bin. So at 7-Eleven? At 7-Eleven. So shops at have an store. And then a further 50 locations that could be, you know, universities, schools, construction sites. Frankly, we're open to wherever they yeah. should go, which again are just centralised points. If enough cups can be collected into a separate stream, 7-Eleven hope to link up with Ballarat inventor Dennis to recycle them in Australia's first purpose-built facility. So if you've got a 7-Eleven bin that's got a coffee cup thing, can I only recycle my 7-Eleven no. cup there? No. Any so you take cup? any cup? We'll take anybody's cup. Are you going to end up recycling everyone's cups or you've got to, how much yeah. are you going to do? So our commitment with uh, Closed Loop is that we're committing to upfront 70 million cups of recycling per annum. So we're basically saying, you know, what we think we put into the system, we want to make sure okay. we take out. Yeah, if everyone gets behind it, it'll be a lot more than 70 million. Yeah, OK. You challenged McDonald's to get behind Big it time. as well? Big time. Yeah. McDonald's, Gloria Jeans, everybody else. Everyone you know, else, yeah. yeah. We're going to go gangbusters at this. Yeah. And, um, you know, we're just going to see where it goes to. Hopefully, uh, now I've just got to figure out how to put a GPS in one of these to make sure I track where it goes. <laughs> it's going to be hard. I'm just going to hold, you to, drink, I'm just gonna hold you to drinking your yeah, coffee. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've reached out to Maccas, but they won't listen to us. Maybe they'll listen to you. Hit them up on Facebook and challenge Maccas to join 7-Eleven. Together, we can make a change and stop the billion coffee cups going to landfill. When it comes to issues like plastic bags or container deposit schemes, federal environment ministers tend not to do very much. They tend to push it onto the states. So I'm keen to see if the current environment minister, Josh Frydenberg, is going to do anything different. While I couldn't pin him down in Canberra the other night, the minister has agreed to meet me near his Melbourne office for an early cuppa. As soon as we sort out his BYO cup. I've got so much keep cup experience at the moment. Thanks for talking to us. Great to see you, Craig. Welcome to Kyong, buddy. I'm glad to see you got your keep cup there. <laughs> uh, always in the thing. Yeah, it's good. You, I guess you couldn't get caught otherwise. <laughs> so, as the Federal Environment Minister, I'm keen to know, are you going to be the one that finally bans the bag or phases out the plastic bag? Because every other one has talked about it hasn't done it. Well, I'm really pleased that we are starting to see the plastic bag phased out. And as you know, South Australia has led the way in Tasmania, the ACT, the Northern Territory, and we welcome the decision and announcement by Queensland, and I hope, you know, if New South Wales follows suit. So don't be a, ba a dag, ban the bag. But you, you could ban the bag. I mean, why doesn't it happen at a federal level? I mean, there's been talking about it. I mean, 2002, there were reports saying, oh, if we brought in a levy, we'd get rid of 75% of bags. Why does the federal government never kind of step in and do it and just leave it to the states? There are some things that are the state responsibilities. When it comes to plastic bags, container deposit levies, things like that, that's where the states need to step up to the plate. Why do the states have to do it? Because I know there has been container well, deposit. Why not? Well, well, I guess because it leads to this kind of hodgepodge around the country of some states going for it not. And it also leads to a lot of buck passing, because, you know, if you're a state that doesn't want to do it, you just say, oh, we're waiting for a national solution, and then the national solution doesn't come in. So, I mean, I guess it just leaves a lot of states to get out of doing it. Well, as you know, we're in a federation. The states have got certain responsibilities. We've got certain responsibilities at the federal level. Uh, you know, they say don't get between a Premier and a bucket of money, and it's looking like don't get between a Premier and a bucket of bags right now. <laughs> really? <laughs> but New South Wales is still saying they're not going to do it, even after Coles and Woolies have gone ahead of them. I mean, does, does it surprise you when the governments are behind the, the big retailers? Well, even though they're a coalition government, I have no hesitation saying to them that it's time to ban the bag. But it just seems like, you know, if you actually had a federal approach, and I know that the states do it, but they don't do a great job of it. I mean, to be fair, if the federal level brought in a kind of levy on plastic bags, you'd massively decrease the amount of use. And you'd also be able to use that money for environmental programs like they have in Ireland. And that's really popular there. Don't you want a popular policy? You need one. Well, we certainly want a popular policy. And the question would be to the states, well, if they think it's popular, then why aren't they phasing out these bags? It doesn't feel like the minister is going to lead the way on a national plastic bag ban. 
But what has he got to say about all the plastic bottles I found in the Yarra River? It's interesting on the container deposit scheme because literally in about 10 metres, I was able to pick up a bag this big of water bottles, Coke bottles, all that kind of stuff. It really does feel like that, you know, you've had the Senate report into all this plastic going to the ocean, the problems that causes. Doesn't this need more drastic action? Like, waiting around just seems to be too late. You're right. When you go down to the Arrow River, you go down to any of our major waterways or parks, you can see too much waste. So there's, but there's so there's much less. When you go to Adelaide, there's a lot less of this, and it just shows that that system works. It's amazing that we haven't jumped to that system a bit earlier federally. Well, it's up to the states. Up to the state. <laughs> up to the states to take the I'm lead. I'm going to get you a it's up to the state shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Save time, you can just point to it. <laughs> Good Cheers. Thanks, man. While politicians are doing very little, the rest of Australia really wants to make a difference. Over the past few months, I've been inundated with messages from schools, neighbourhoods and community groups that have risen to the challenge and joined me in the war on waste. Today I'm visiting one of them, a little primary school by the sea in Adelaide, who are hoping by the end of the year to be completely bin free. G'day, I'm Craig. Toby. Welcome to Star of the Sea. Yeah, this is, it's great to be here. A nice, safe place to have a this chat. Is probably <laughs> the worst place we could be standing at the, at the moment. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. So what are you guys doing here? I mean, I hear you guys, you're trying to, what, reduce the waste? Uh, yeah, we're, we're trying our best. We've started six or seven years ago. We ran a, a, a whole school waste audit. So you went through all the bins of the school? <laughs> we collected all of the waste that was generated in, in a 24-hour period. Yeah. And um, sorted that piece by piece. I've been there, that's great fun. Yeah, <laughs> that we generated. And um, we were pretty alarmed and disturbed by uh, some of the data that what came What kind back. of things did you find in the bins? Oh, one example was um, just whole apples uh, in one day, the day of collection. Uh, there were 18 whole apples. Unbitten, just... We'd, yeah, that was another category altogether if they had a little bite taken out of them. And we're talking 3,600 whole apples a year. Crazy, yeah, isn't it? It was crazy. And it was like, it got to the stage where, you know, some of us here at Star of the Sea sort of thought, this can't, this yeah. can't go on. So you've been trying to fix this? We've been doing our best. Yeah, it's yeah, good. We've, uh, we've got a long way to go. Yeah. Um, but our goal is for, by the end of this year, to have zero bins in the school. Wow. Uh, if we can really keep improving our waste management. This is a big goal. Yeah. Let's I have like a... it though. Yeah, Show absolutely. me what you're doing. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> the first step was to reduce the amount of packaging the kids were bringing to school in their lunch boxes. They were encouraged to pack what they describe as a nude lunch, food free from plastic wrapping. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hello. Can we say hi to Craig? Hi, Craig. Hello. What's your class name? 3S. Hello, 3S. <laughs> Isabel, would you like to come up and explain to Craig? Then, in each classroom, the kids separate the waste into three different bins. So what's this? That's our mini bin that, like, our landfill bin so we can wipe out waste instead of, like, putting lots of rubbish into one bin, like, try less. OK, so this is, the, this is, this is what you try to put all your landfill waste into. So how often do you fill this up? Five, six weeks. So this hasn't been filled in five weeks? Yeah, we haven't had any rubbish. That's amazing. Are you sneaking it home in your pockets? This is what's happening. Uh, no. no. <laughs> and then what do you put in this one? Like uh, fruit scraps. And then this is your paper over here. Wow. Yeah. And do you really manage to fit your rubbish into this tiny bin? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, easy. <laughs> we hardly ever get any. You don't? You hardly get any? That's amazing. How do you do that? Bringing less rubbish into school. Try bringing like vegetables and fruit instead of like chips and ah. usually bars. So it's making you healthier as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, fantastic. What about you guys? Is it easy to do or hard? Yeah, pretty easy. And are you the best class? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, 3S. You're Cheers, we're gonna go. See you later, okay? Thanks again. <laughs> Bye. Back to work now, come on. <laughs> Part of the school's challenge is to cut the huge amount of food waste they were sending to landfill. You can see the heat coming out of it. Yeah, that's yeah. great. 
The students empty the organic waste bins from the classrooms into a compost system and worm farms run by a team of Year 6 students called the Eco Warriors. Well, apples, at least it's getting pretty close. <laughs> Somebody didn't like this apple, did they? <laughs> The last stage to reduce waste is separating the bottles and cans. They can be returned to a container deposit depot for a 10 cent refund for every item. 10 cents, 10 cents. So all of this is 10 cents. 10 cents for this, 10 cents for this. Yeah. Yeah, this says 10 cents on it, you're right. What about even this little thing? Yeah. 10 cents. Yeah. 10 cents in SA. Unbelievable. This really adds up. And you guys get part of it as a commission, don't you? No. No? No. Oh. Fill another one, guys. Keep going. <laughs> so hopefully this sort of initiative can be fully introduced nationwide. Yeah, well, hopefully, I don't know. Unfortunately, in most states, if you do this, you get no money for it. Yeah. Let's keep it up, guys. Well done. <laughs> oh, hey, guys. Once a week, two from every class bring their mini bin to the school oval. Bye, Thanks for coming, guys. Right, yeah. RM. Some Let's tip, it, tip it in, let's see. Plastic, just a few bits of plastic, that's it. This way, Toby can keep track of how they're progressing with their mini bins and less the landfill challenge. That's a bit of blue tack. Chip haggers, pencil shavings. There you go. Chip packets. Still not much, is there? Well done. We just got a bit of air. You got an empty? Yeah. Oh, three S, of course. <laughs> so come on in, guys. Come, let's have a look at your rubbish from the whole school. That's it. That's, that's not much. You've done very well. What an inspiring group of kids. Can you imagine if all schools followed this lead? There you go. Should we put him in too? No. <laughs> These kids are setting a great example of how we can all reduce our waste to landfill. Right, everyone's just got to start copying you guys and then we'll have much less waste. Congratulations! I've been amazed at how little changes to my habits have been able to reduce my waste and I know that so many of you have done that too and gone so much further. Because of your response to war on waste, it's put a lot of pressure on politicians and supermarkets and businesses to make a change. There'll be some big steps forward on plastic bags and some little ones on food waste. And we've also changed our habits by joining the Bing Your Own Cup revolution. But these are only really the tip of the iceberg. There's still a long way to go, so please continue to join us on this war on waste. And we want to hear from you. Everything from packaging problems to recycling myths. Send us an email with your biggest waste issues. In the meantime, we'll track down the governments and councils and corporations that refuse to fix the problems in our waste system. The war on waste is not over. <laughs>